So I made this video probably last year at some point on using Riverside, and it's been one of the top videos that still is getting some views on my website. It's a blog post that people keep visiting. Um, and so I felt this pressure to update it because I have this commitment to Padmaha and this channel on keeping information up to date. So as platforms change and evolve, um, my goal is to arm you with better information on how to use them. So Riverside is one of those platforms. Um, they did a massive overhaul to some of their features and, and how you can kind of navigate within the software. Uh, so let's start with why you would even use Riverside. Um, this is going to help you basically prevent any internet issues. Let's say your internet sucks or your guest's internet sucks. Um, at the end of the day, if you're both recording properly, it will preserve the max quality local files from your computer and your microphone before it got uploaded to the internet. Once you go ahead and log in, you're going to see your dashboard kind of pop up. So I'm going to use Human Evolution Project as an example. Just record an episode with my buddy Bryce today on that. This is what the settings for the studio looks like. You can obviously customize your name. You want to do that through the name of your show because your guests will be seeing that when they enter the room. Um, you can choose to kind of have the waiting room feature turn on similar to how you can do that in Zoom. And then a setting that I like to make sure is turned on is audio and video is always selected. And then when it comes to your video quality, you can go with 720p, uh, but I like to go with 1080p wherever possible. I like to leave the rest of these settings kind of alone. And now I'm going to show you the main link that you're going to paste in your calendar software and your Google invites. Um, basically, this is the equivalent of a Zoom link that people will kind of click through to get into your studio. So the way we access that is we're going to hit invite people. Now, make sure guest is a uh, you know, highlight it over here, and then you can just go ahead and copy the link. I recommend saving it instead of just sending out an email every single time to the guest, because um, this link stays pretty consistent. So once you paste it in your scheduling software, you don't really have to worry about locating it and sending it out every time. You can also, if you wanted to do this live and invite people in, you can have an audience link where people can just view what's going on. But the more useful one is having a link for your producer. So anybody who's working on your episodes, as soon as you record in Riverside, you don't even have to download the raw files or upload them into anything. It's just there and accessible for your producer to be able to grab it and do what they got to do. Now, the next area that I'm going to show you is view all recordings. This is where you access anything that you've recorded. Um, and as you can see today, we did uh, season three, episode three. Again, you can grab this link over here to share this with people if they need access to the raw recordings. But as an example, I'm going to go ahead and click on to the latest episode just so you can see what it looks like. Um, the main area is at the bottom over here where uh, you want to make sure that both statuses for each track is specified as done. That means that it's been uploaded versus if your guest leaves early and it hasn't fully uploaded yet, you'll see this saying still processing or something like that. So it's very easy to fix. That's an issue you should be aware of uh, because it will happen. Your guests will do that. So you're going to just copy this link and send it to them. They open this up on their browser and it immediately resumes the upload process so you can get to work on your files. Now, something to keep in mind is that Riverside works best with Google Chrome. So on your desktop, you can't be using Safari or Mozilla or something like that. Uh, that might change in the future, but for now, just to be safe, use Google Chrome. Something I really love about what Riverside has updated is their app. So their app for iOS makes it pretty easy for you to hop on a podcast as a guest on your phone or iPad. And with some of the latest updates that they've been doing, they've also added the feature where you can actually hop on as a producer, which means you could host the show through your phone as well. So I would just recommend briefing your guests before they hop on that, hey, use Google Chrome or hey, hop on this app and make sure they feel comfortable with that uh, before the day of the conversation. Now, this next area here you're going to see is the actual track. So the WAV files are the audio files that you would need to work on. And the MP4 file is the video track for each guest. So what's nice is they've separated this, which gives you the ultimate customizability, whether you're working on it or an editor is working on it for you. So that's mainly what you're going to need down here. When you scroll all the way back up to the top and you hit these uh, three dots, you're going to see an option to download the video backup, an audio backup. Uh, and this is important because it will put together a rough quality version for you to review or upload as a transcript or do whatever you want with it maybe in the meantime, so you can listen to the cohesive 
conversation versus just downloading the individual tracks. So that option is useful sometimes, but the next thing I'm about to show you is probably one of the main features that you might begin to use. And it's something that I didn't cover in my last video. So I wanna make sure to do that here um, because they've also really upgraded this area uh, inside of Riverside, but it is the editor, okay? So the magic editor that they basically have built in here is gonna be accessible in this clip section. So if you hit create clips or you hit go to editor, it will take you to where we wanna go. Now, you're gonna see this option to basically have a story optimized or portrait vertical style, a uh, Instagram post that's like 1080 by 1080p, and then a full length that's optimized for YouTube and websites. So most of the time for your video podcast, you're probably gonna be grabbing the full length version, but there are times where uh, I've, I've tested out what the Instagram post looks like, um, and it's not bad. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose full length because I'm using this for the full video version of the episode. I want to make sure the whole conversation is actually selected. This is showing me kind of a preview of what it might look like. So I want to adjust the layout. I don't like the rounded corner, so I turn that off. And then I like to make sure that we're not selecting the grid with gaps version, but you just select the grid, okay? So this makes it an even split screen where there's very minimal uh, room for error. Because if you hit the full frame AI or the shared AI, I really like this layout and I've used it in the past. Basically switches when the speaker does, but an issue that typically comes up is the AI isn't always perfect, so it doesn't switch back as often as you might like. Um, so going with basically the grid option is a very safe option to go with, um, but I can also show you a way on how to avoid the AI messing up. That's gonna be in the recorder itself, which I will show you a little bit later in this video. Now, let's say you wanted to add your own background to it that you designed in Canva or something like that with the show name and some logos. You could technically upload that by hitting background and adding that through here. You can also add the logo or watermark for your podcast in uh, the lower right corner if you wanted to. The last thing before I hit the export button, I just wanna make sure to rename this, okay? So we're just gonna say S3E3 split. Now, once I do that, I'm going to hit the export button. I'm going to make sure 1080p is selected. And I personally do not like to select the normalize audio levels and remove background noise here. Um, I'm sure this feature is going to be upgraded in the future, but I found that I like to do it on my own in Adobe Audition or Adobe Premiere. Selecting this typically doesn't give me the result I want, so I just keep it unchecked. But you are welcome to test this out for yourself and um, download two versions just to hear the difference, right? So hit export, then export another version where these two settings are kind of toggled off. Well, so once you would do that, it would not just download yet, it's going to actually export. So when you go back to, uh, let's say, dashboard, obviously it's a bit of a longer video, so it might take a little less than an hour for this to kind of wrap up. Um, but once it does, I can basically hit this and then I'm going to be able to hit the download button up top here and it's going to allow me to pull this whole video track. So now I showed you that feature using the full video, but you can obviously do that with shorter clips. So if I go back to the editor, let me show you this time using a story format that I could use for shorts or reels or TikTok. I'm going to go ahead, remove the gaps, kind of follow the same concepts that I did the last time. And now if I basically trim this down to, let's just say these 31 seconds right here, then I can hit export and then it spits this version out. Now I have something that I can use to distribute for social media and things like that. So in the episode dashboard, you can see how um, our clips are going to remain here. So that's mainly what you need to know in the editor and in this episode dashboard area. The next thing I'm gonna show you is basically how you record an episode and how you look like a pro in front of your guests when they enter the room as well. Now on my main dashboard for that specific studio, I'm just gonna go to studio. This step is very important. Make sure that you and your guest are wearing headphones. If not, the feedback that comes out of the speaker can interrupt the recording and the quality of it. So if you hit, I am not using headphones in an emergency, it turns on this background cancellation feature, which can work, but also, you know, it can be a little shifty. So I recommend using headphones where possible to avoid that. 
When you're ready to set up the inputs, you want to make sure your mic is connected and next to the microphone icon, the right mic is actually selected. Now, next to the volume icon for my headphones, I have the appropriate one selected. If let's say I wanted to switch to just my built-in speakers, I would hit internal speakers. Next to the video icon, this is important because I could use the built-in uh, camera that it already has, which most of the time you'll be doing. But let's say you bought an external webcam to connect, or let's say, like right now, I am using my iPhone as basically the webcam. So uh, Reincubate Camo is basically a software that you need downloaded on your computer and on your phone. I have a more detailed video on helping you kind of get set up with that part and navigating some of the settings in Camo. But for now, let's go ahead and join the studio. If you're doing a guest episode, you're going to see your guests kind of pop up in this area. Once they do, you're going to see two speakers over here. They are not going to be able to see the settings and controls on their end, but you will be able to. Now, this volume normalizer is really important. If the sound from the mics aren't balanced between the guests, it can really throw off the AI. So let me show you a quick example of how I am talking into the mic. I'm hitting a good level, but let's say my guest is all the way down like right here, very low. So if I wanna match that, I can drop my mic down. Now, even though I'm kind of yelling, it's not necessarily picking up as much sound. Now it is, right? So this little panel is really a way for you to monitor the sound for you and your guests to make sure it has the highest quality recording before you even get into post-production and editing. A good practice I like to do is rename the episode. So if you know the title of the episode, the number of it, put that down over here so that it actually uh, is easy to find afterwards. There's this whole media section that's been added. I don't personally use this, but you could use this technically while you're bringing a guest on or while you're ending the show, you could control that from here. Or what's even cooler, and I've done this for some of my clients, is you sit in on the episode as a producer. So there's this uh, voice that's coming and you're kind of briefing everybody on it, but in the recording, they, they can't, uh, the audience can't hear you or see you, um, but the speakers basically can. So that feature is really cool. And then if you need to talk to your guests, send anything back and forth uh, uh, in the chat, you can do that over here as well. Let's just say that you are recording a solo episode using Riverside. You wanna make sure that you hit expand frame so that you can kinda of see the full view of where you are at. This can be a little frustrating um, because you only see half of it. And it's important that when you are with a guest that you kinda of position yourself so that you're going to be in the center of this frame. So when I expand frame, like I'm a little bit more over to the right, I should be a little bit more centered over here. That's just something to keep in mind if you are recording a solo episode. Now, just make sure that all of your inputs and all of your guest inputs are all set up because once you start the recording, you can't change that stuff, right? You, you're gonna have to stop it and start it all over again. Once you've confirmed that, the settings section, I'll give you a quick walkthrough of this as well. The main thing you need to know here is when you go into general, um, you have the option to change your you know, live call quality. This is, uh, it's on the lower version because there's less lagging, there's less speed issues, right? In, in the final export though, it's still going to be the highest quality. It's not gonna be the internet recording. But if I was to shift it to this one, it would be higher quality while we're talking. It would just be using up a little bit more bandwidth. The same thing for your recording settings. We already adjusted this in the main studio settings, but if you needed to do that here, you can certainly do so. The live streaming feature is really cool. I haven't personally used this, but let's say you want to live stream to some of this stuff, you could go ahead and set that up. The sharing your screen feature on here is pretty awesome. Uh, you can select a specific tab, you can select a window, the whole screen, and then at the end, it exports basically the single track of that screen recording and the mixed version where it's showing it in live time when you were actually uh, showing the screen. So when I hit record now, you're gonna notice that it gives you a little bit of a countdown. Six, five, four, three, two, and then you're on. Now, I wanted to do that just to show you this feature that's kind of new, uh, which is the mark clip feature. You need to remember the shortcut, it's just M, okay? M on your keyboard, if you hit that, what it does is it creates a clip at that specific mark, here is the 12 seconds. When you go back into your episode dashboard, that clip section you saw was blank, you're gonna see all these timestamps already there. So you can jump in and start creating clips 
much faster, which makes your promotion process and distribution strategy just so much easier. So anytime you or your guest say something really amazing, you can really quickly, easily, without distracting yourself, just hit the M button and you'll be able to mark that spot and remember it for later. Once your episode is done, you're gonna notice that you're taken to the upload page where it continues to upload or you're taken to the episode dashboard where you'll be able to see your markers and clips and things of that nature. So the tools and features that I shared with you today are gonna make life so much easier if you're recording a podcast remotely using riverside.fm. So if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really gonna enjoy some of the free resources that I have on starting, growing, and monetizing your show at Podmahal. Com. And of course, like, comment, and subscribe. You know how much that helps. And if you have a few moments, check out some of these videos or save them for later because I think you'll like them too.